Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at how to install a custom operating system on your dedicated server. As you can see, we've logged into the Synergy Control Panel, and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and launch the IPMI Web Control Panel. We can do this by clicking Launch KVM and saving the file. Now, if you're unsure how to do this or launch KVM to begin with, I'd recommend checking out the other tutorial video we have on the channel. We'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description of this video. Once you download the application that will allow you to IPMI into your server, we'll go ahead and accept the risk and run the application to pull it up. And we'll also want to ensure that we have the operating system we want installed already prepared as a .iso file. So as you can see, uh, this is the ISO file that we will be using today. If we go to details, this is actually a Windows 10 image, uh, just a standard Windows 10 ISO file. Now, if you're unsure how to get a Windows 10 ISO file, uh, you can go to Microsoft's website and then download their setup tool, which will then allow you to create a ISO file. So once your IPMI is pulled up, as you can see, we are currently running CentOS 7 on our server. However, we don't really need to worry about this, nor do we need to log in as of now, because we are going to uh, install a new operating system anyway. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and click Virtual Media, Virtual Storage, and it's gonna pop up this other window in which we can click CD, ROM, and ISO. And from here, we'll need to select a logical drive type. Uh, this little drop down will select ISO file and then click open image, select our desktop, and then select the ISO file. We'll click open and then click plug in. And you'll see the uh, status history that will say plug in okay. So we're gonna go back into the control panel, click power, then do a cold reboot. Um, and then wait for the system to reboot. Now, during this time, it's going to display nothing within IPMI. This is totally normal. Now, you're gonna be waiting for the Supermicro uh, logo that will pop up to kind of show you that the system is booting. And once you see that, we're going to hit the F11 key pretty much as many times as we can in order to get into the boot menu. So we're still pressing it. While it goes through the setup, we're just gonna keep on pressing it until it prompts us for a password. And as you can see, we now have the password prompt and the password that we're going to enter and the same will apply to you is simply password. So the password is password. We'll hit enter and this will allow us then to select a boot option. So as you can see, the boot device option has been pulled up here and we're going to go ahead and click the CD-ROM uh, 3000 here and we'll go ahead and select that, hit enter. And what this will do is take the ISO file from your computer. We'll actually need to hit enter once again there uh, to boot. What this is doing essentially is taking the ISO file that we have on our desktop and it's going to send it to this uh, dedicated server. Now keep in mind, this can take some time dependent on your location to the dedicated server. So how far away are you from the actual server? as well as your internet speed, um, especially with Windows. Because this ISO file is quite large, um, specifically almost four gigs, it will take a little bit of time to actually send this data into the server itself. The best thing to do, especially if you're installing Windows, is to just leave this be until Windows then prompts you for the setup. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pause and come back whenever the Windows installer prompts us for the actual uh, setup. Okay, so we are now back into IPMI, and as you can see, um, our cursor is a little slow. That's just due to being through IPMI. Once you see this uh, next window setup thing, we're gonna go ahead and click next. You'll want to select the language and everything like that, just like you normally would with installing Windows, and then we'll click install now. So we're just gonna monitor this, and then the next step we'll actually need uh, to do is simply create the partitions for Windows to do. And it'll automatically do it for you if you're not comfortable uh, doing that yourself. So what we can do here is accept the license terms, click next. And we're going to want to ensure we click custom install Windows only. We can't use the upgrade because obviously we don't have an initial install of Windows. So we'll click the custom install. And the next thing we're gonna do is select this drive partition. Go ahead and click delete. And again, your cursor may be a little slow just because that network connection uh, does have to go through IPMI and IPMI is not the fastest thing in the world. Um, it's typically just meant for terminal view, not uh, an interface. So we're gonna just delete that other partition as well. And next up, we're gonna click new. As you can see, we have all of the uh, 
allocated space there of our drive. So we clicked new, we're gonna click apply. We're leaving the size as default. That's gonna use all of the free space there. Then it's gonna to say to ensure all features will work correctly, they'll need to create additional partitions for the system files. We're just gonna go ahead and click okay on that as well. And this will just take a moment to actually create those partitions. And once it does, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click next. The drive zero partition two should already be selected. Next thing it's going to do is start copying over the Windows files, getting files ready for installation, installing the features, installing updates, and then finish up. This process may take a little while. Um, keep in mind it does have to install the entire operating system, so this will just be your standard uh, Windows install from here on out. Okay, so the install has finished. We're going to go ahead and select the region um, for us. We'll click yes. And we'll just need to go through the normal uh, Windows install. Um, we're going to go ahead and select uh, our keyboard layout. So we're just going to use uh, the US. Click yes. Uh, we're going to skip uh, adding the second keyboard. And from here on out, it's essentially just a normal Windows 10 install. So for the network, we're actually going to need to go ahead and click skip for now. We're going to need to configure this after we install Windows. So we can just click skip for now. And we're just going to go ahead and click no here. The next thing you're going to do is going to need to name this PC. So for this, we'll just call it tutorials. Click next. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and set a password. Now for this, I'm actually going to use a password generator. Reason being is we need to ensure this password is very strong so no one else can remote desktop into this computer because it will be accessible uh, from the internet. So what I'm going to do is just create a text document here. I'm going to generate a password. Go ahead and copy this. And you don't have to use this specific password generator. Um, I would just suggest using some sort of password generator that you trust. Um, and of course, saving that password. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and actually set this password. You will need to type it in. Unfortunately, you can't copy and paste within IPMI. So we'll be right back once we type this up. So now that we've entered in our password, we're actually going to need to create a security question. So we can go ahead and just select one. Uh, we'll choose pet's name. And for this, I'm just gonna type pebble. So obviously for the security questions, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this information is accurate or at least you know the answer to these uh, security questions. The only reason I'm putting Pebble for these is because this is a tutorial and I'm not going to include my personal information within this actual video. So we'll go ahead and click next once you have set those security questions and it's going to bring us to the next step. Um, this step's pretty much up to you. We're gonna click no for this just for the sake of the tutorial. Now in terms of privacy settings, this is completely up to you and won't affect the initial install. Um, so you can choose what information you want to share, um, but for my case, I'm just gonna leave it at this. We'll click accept. So as you can see, um, it went black there for a second and now has prompted us that it's going to take several minutes for Windows to finish the install and then let us into the desktop, in which case we'll proceed with configuring the remote desktop. All right, so as you can see, we now have the Windows desktop in front of us. The setup and install has now been completed, but we do have to do a few things in order to get a network connection as well as set up remote desktop. So we no longer have to use IPMI, which as you can see is quite slow. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and drag our cursor down to the bottom and we're going to click open network and internet settings. So I've right clicked over the internet icon there, the ethernet adapter. And once this pulls up, we'll click change adapter options and it's going to display us with uh, two things here. So the first thing here will be our first ethernet port on our machine. As you can see, the cable is not plugged in. You'll see network cable unplugged. But the second one, we do have a cable plugged in. So this is what the one we'll be using. So your machine may be slightly different. If your cable is plugged in on the first ethernet device there, uh, then you'll wanna use that one. But if it's plugged in on the second one, then you'll wanna use that one. So just be sure you're not inputting your details into an ethernet device that doesn't have an actual cable plugged in. We'll go ahead and select ethernet two, right click, click properties, and we're going to change the internet protocol version four, TCP slash IPv4. So we'll select that, click properties, and we're going to select use the following IP address. And as you can see to my left here, I already have Synergy pulled up. And essentially what we'll be doing is copying all of these IP details into our machine. So for our IP address, again, yours will be different. 
So our IP address is going to be 194.213.3.15. And then our subnet mask is actually automatically going to fill in with the first three 255s. We're actually going to backspace that last to zero and go ahead and look over here. Our subnet mask is 224 for the last one. So we'll enter in 224. And our default gateway will be the gateway IP here. So it'll be 194.213.3.1. Once we have our IP squared away, we're going to go to the DNS settings. And for this, I'd recommend using a combination of Cloudflare as well as Google's DNS. So Cloudflare's DNS, the primary DNS we'll be using is 1.1.1.1. And then Google's DNS is 8.8.8.8. .8 now, the reason we're doing this is because the first preferred DNS will be used for Cloudflare. If Cloudflare has an issue of some sort, it's going to default back to the alternative DNS server, uh, which will be 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google's DNS. So the reason I'm using two different DNS providers is simply because if one has an issue, it will default back to the other one and vice versa. So let's go ahead and validate settings upon exit. Click OK. And we can go ahead and close out of this. And we'll see a Windows prompt pop up that says Windows Network Diagnostics. And it's going to ask us if, if we want to allow this PC uh, to be discoverable by other PCs and devices on this network. And select no. But we will need to change to very similar settings to that uh, in regards to remote desktop. So we can X out of this and all of our other network stuff that we do have open. Again, it will be a little slow to do. Now that we have our network sorted out, the next thing we're going to do is enable remote desktop. So to do this, we're going to go over to the Windows icon, open up our settings tab, and we're going to go to the settings bar and type in remote desktop. We'll go ahead and select remote desktop settings, and we're going to enable remote desktop. We're going to go ahead and click Confirm. It says you and your users selected under user accounts will be able to connect to this PC remotely. We'll click Confirm. Now, once we enable Remote Desktop, we're going to go ahead and, and on our actual uh, Windows machine here, we'll go ahead and go to the search bar, type in Remote Desktop, and we're going to get the IP from Synergy once again and type it into our Remote Desktop connection. So we'll do 194.213.3.15. Click uh, Connect. And then it's going to ask us for the username and password. So our username will be tutorials. That's what we previously set up the account on here for. So tutorials. And then our password is what we set previously. So we'll go ahead and go to our password file and enter that in. So we've entered in our password. We're going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask us to uh, verify the uh, certificate errors. We'll just go ahead and click Yes. And it's going to configure our remote session. And here we are. It says unlock the PC. Welcome. And now we've connected to our server. So we are now in our server um, and we can do essentially whatever we need to do. With that being said, that's going to wrap up this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join our Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.